Hey there, fellas. So let me tell you what we're doing today. We'll be experimenting as per usual. Now this car is no longer fit for use. It needs some serious repairs. A complete suspension rebuild. Yeah, we've obliterated the poor thing. But at least the engine still works. Anyway, so here's what we have in mind. We're gonna remove the oil pan from this motor and hack off the webbing from the crankshaft, including the counterweights. So yeah, we intend on cutting off the whole lot. And then we're gonna try to fire up the engine without all of that stuff, and see what happens, of course. So what's gonna happen? Well, we don't know that yet. In theory, we are talking about the counterweights here, meaning that we should get a serious imbalance. The consequences are more or less predictable, I'd say. Right, so we've got the car on a hoist, we just have to lift it up, drain the oil, remove the oil pan, hack everything up and see what happens. Let's do this. Hacking off the crankshaft webbing. How will that affect engine operation? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Right, fellas, so while we were taking this car apart, we stumbled upon something pretty curious. To be honest, this is the first time I've encountered something like this. So we started dismantling the motor. Turns out it's basically new. In other words, either someone rebuilt it and did it properly, or it's a new motor altogether. We didn't find a single thing that would indicate the engine being tampered with. It looks like nobody has ever opened up this motor before us. In all seriousness, it doesn't look like this engine has ever been touched or repaired. So we've decided that it's best to leave it alone. We'll just slap the valve cover and the oil pan back on. That's not too difficult. After that, we carefully remove this engine from the bay. We've actually been working on a build that was in need of a new motor. And from the looks of it, I'd say we found one, right under our noses. So that problem basically solved itself then. As for the task at hand, since we do have a few engines that are just lying around and taking up space, some of you might have figured out that this one is from our Gennady project. Now, since it's just lying there on the floor, we figured we'd cut out the webbing without removing the crank, but it's actually pretty inconvenient with the engine bolted to the car. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff getting in the way, the cross member and all that. But since this motor is already out, we might as well just extract the crankshaft. So yeah, we'll do that. Then we start hacking, throw the crankshaft back in, fit the engine to the car and fire it up. Okay, so here's where we're at. It's all good and we're looking at a crankshaft that's lost quite a bit of weight. Right here you can see the webbing that we cut off. It's still pretty hot. We didn't mask anything before we started hacking, so now it's a matter of giving it a good clean. We've got all we need to get that done, including some cleaners and compressed air to dry it off. Then we settle it right back in, attach the caps, rods, everything else, throw that motor into the car, started, wonder what'll happen. I'm guessing it should be able to rev up quicker, what with the crankshaft being so light. Now let's put it together and see, shall we?
Okay, we've got it in there. God knows what's up with the alignment. Anyway, it's time to try firing it up. Go for it, man. Well, it sort of works, I guess. Hopefully we can keep it from crapping out too early. It's just a bit cranky. Sure, it has been lying around for quite a while. The problem is there's no lubrication, and therefore no way for it to boost compression. I did grease it up a bit. Oh, you did? boy. And now I guess we're ready for a serious trial. We'll be holding it at various RPM and keeping track of... Whether we get any sort of vibration, whether anything bad happens to the crankshaft, though it might hold up okay. Time to find out. We ready? Yeah. Let her rip. Looks like it seized up. Hang on. Firing this motor up isn't going to be easy. Okay, fellas, so check this out. It's running without the crankshaft webbing. Give it some gas. Is it running smoothly? I can see from here that nothing's vibrating. How does it react to throttle input? All good? You can even hear that the motor is more eager to rev up. Cyril was barely even touching the cable end up. He's got a makeshift throttle up there and the engine starts revving up as soon as he touches it. The reaction is lightning fast. Since we took so much weight out of the crankshaft, the motor doesn't hesitate at all. Those revs climb much more rapidly. As for harshness, we didn't notice any extra vibrations. Let's not forget that we're not running any pulleys or belts or oil pumps. Oh yeah, you're actually right. I forgot to mention, fellas, we've removed the alternator, the water pump and all of the other accessories. So there's the explanation. On the other hand, you can hear that the motor is super rev-happy. Stop! We should film a bit from up top. What's that noise? That's the clutch. Oh, so that's the clutch spinning, I see. Can you get me down, please? What, you scared already? Now I see we, since we've brought the car down, we'll just start her up and have a look from up here what's going on, as in see how the engine is feeling, see whether it's gonna wobble or not. Let's go! Looks all right to me. No issues whatsoever. The reaction time is... Very good. It's 
eating up everything we throw at it. Shut it off! Yeah, go ahead. It stops rotating immediately. It stops like right away. Since there is no inertia to keep the rotation going, it's all good, fellas. The engine works despite the webbing being hacked off. We could have just left the webbing intact on one side to get a serious imbalance going. But we've decided to cut off the entire lot. We thought that would do the trick. But for whatever reason, we ain't seeing any imbalance. Aside from the engine becoming more rev-happy, nothing has changed. Like, we didn't notice any adverse effects. However, fellas, while all of this was happening, an idea occurred to us on how we can get the balance out of whack and see how that affects engine operation. And we're most likely going to test our theory on this very motor. But that's gonna have to wait until a future episode. As for today's experiment, our work here is done. We're looking at some positive results. The engine held up. It works, so all is good. These Ladas never cease to amaze me. Even when they're missing some vital parts, they still manage to run somehow. You can even bang the motor off the rev limiter without any negative consequences. What's not to love? Anyway, fellas, that's all I have for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, maybe even some advice. Give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.